Let's worship God. Oh God, we praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. We give you honor, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you are worthy, worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know what? Uh, this morning, we want to come before God in prayer. Amen. Uh, we want to pray. Amen. For all those, amen, who came. Uh, for the rally, we want to pray that God will just be with them, that God will continue to help them, God will continue to to move in their lives. Amen. I want to pray that uh, that uh, that uh, God speaks to us this morning. I want to pray for the surrounding churches. Amen. The the Rialto Riverside San Bernardino churches. Amen. Amen. That God will just be with them. That God will help them. Amen. Uh, they got, uh, San Bernardino has Pastor Noe from La Gloria this morning. Pastor uh, uh, Alfonso Lara will be in Rialto. And then after that, he's going to to Riverside to cover the service over there, to, to be a blessing. They're being a ble These pastors are being a blessing to the ministry, man. So we want to pray that God will be with them this morning and God will just, just touch hearts, amen. We want to pray for our church, amen, as God continues to move and help us and God guide us, amen, that God will continue to just help us change lives and, and God will just change our hearts, amen, that we will just have a heart for God, a mind for the things of God, amen, and we would we would respond to God's calling in our lives, amen. So you know what, this morning, amen, you could trust in God, amen. There's a lot of things in our lives, amen, that, 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 that go to the left, that go to the right, amen, and keep us from focusing and being centered, amen, in the things of God. But you know what, this 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 morning, amen, let's let's get rid of those things. You know what I always tell you, you know, leave them outside, amen. And when you leave, don't pick them up, amen. Let, let them go. The wind will blow them away. Amen. Let God take care of it, amen. And uh, you know what, this morning, you can trust in God. So let's cry out to God. Let's worship God this morning as we open up our prayer. Amen. So let's worship God. Hallelujah, my Lord Jesus. We praise you, my God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, God, my Father, we thank you, God, this morning, God. God, for allowing us to come into your presence, God. God, we thank you, God. God, for moving, God, in our lives, God. We thank you, God, for what you did over the weekend, God, in the rally, God. We thank you, God. God, for speaking to us, God. But God, right now, God, we pray, God, for the needs of each and every individual in this place, God. God, that you would touch hearts, God. God, that you would just begin to pour yourself out into their lives, God. God, and I pray right now, God, that you just bless your word, God. Speak to us, God. Uh, God, that we would, God, be your servants, God. And we thank you, God, for all that you're doing. And we praise and we worship you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You take time to greet someone this, this morning. <laughs> Amen. This morning we got some announcements. Amen. 
I want to thank you for joining us. I want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., amen. Uh, we'll be finishing our fundamental Bible study this Wednesday. Amen. It's been really good. Don't forget, go to YouTube. You can go ahead and catch up on all the all the fundamental Bible studies. And, and, and we've been talking strictly about the, the basic fundamentals of remaining safe, keeping your eyes on God, the things that we need, amen, if we want to continue to, to fight that good fight of faith, amen. Amen. Send, send a service, amen. You can go to YouTube, send a service to a friend. Send it to somebody you know that's going through something. Allow God to speak to them. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, also, uh, our Sunday night fight, amen. I uh, just want to remind you we have um, our Sunday night fight is on pause for the month of September. We will start again on October the 6th, the first Sunday of next month. And I got to look something really quick. Next Sunday, the 22nd, we are having our corporate service, okay? Next Sunday night, we are having our corporate service in the San Bernardino Church, amen. It's our, it's our service where we all come together, the four churches, amen. So next Sunday night, amen, we're not having our Sunday night fight because we're going to be in San Bernardino having, um, having our corporate service with the four churches. He already has a guest preacher coming, and it's going to be a good, good time, amen. Amen. You can never have enough of God. Amen. Uh, also, don't forget, November 22nd and the 23rd is the Women's Conference in El Centro. Amen. Uh, if you're going, make sure we get that confirmed with, with Sister Martha that we can uh, that you can go. If you've never been, you're not sure, amen, take a chance and go. Amen. Uh, Martha's going to, I believe, going to be leaving on Friday. I'm not sure what time for her, but she'll be leaving on Friday and coming back uh, Saturday. And it's going to be a good, good time. El Centro really puts on a really good conference for the women. You guys get spoiled. You guys get everything. The men, we get nothing. Amen. <laughs> no, you guys, you know what? You guys deserve it. It's, good. It's, a good, it's a good opportunity. Amen. So, you know what? Uh, make plans for that. Make plans for that. It'll, it, God, God can speak to you and change your life. Amen. Also, just want to remind you, amen, we just did our, our, uh, our rally with the focus on international ministry, reaching the world. Amen. Taking the land. Uh, and I mentioned this uh, uh, yesterday morning during my sermon. We're going to Paris, France next year, and we got churches that were interested. People and pastors were were were, were talking about it. They wanted. They're asking me for information. So you know, praise God that we hopefully we could take a, a good pr a group with us. The bigger the group, the cheaper it gets. So uh, so prepare for next next uh, fall, next October for uh, for Paris. Uh, if you don't have a passport, uh, start getting them. Amen. This morning, we're going to have Pastor Jesse Gonzalez from Richmond, California. Amen. So it's going to be a good, good time this morning. Amen. amen. So uh, these are all the announcements. We're going to have the offering. So let's worship God. Amen. As Russia comes forward. Amen. amen. You know what? This morning, amen, you give with an open heart. Amen. You uh, bring your tithe. Give an offering, support missions, amen. I'll be sending our our missions offerings this, this week to uh, Colombia and to uh, Peru, amen. Uh, we've, been, we've been blessed to be able to help support these works for the past five years, and, and God's really moving down there, amen. Things are happening down there, so you know what? And, and a lot of it has to do with, with your support. And sometimes it feels like, well, it's not that much, but you know what? Knowing that someone is there behind you, backing you up, man, is 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 what a pastor needs to know that, hey, I'm, I can do this. I can continue moving forward. So you be faithful in your giving, your tithes, and your offerings, amen. You allow God to use you, amen. Don't forget, you can give online at ndgive, uh, as, through Zal at uh, ndgive at gmail.com, or you can use the QR code on the screen, amen, amen. So you know what? God bless you guys. So let's bow our hearts, amen, as Brother Angel bless the gift and the giver. Father God, we ask this morning that you bless these tithes and offerings that are brought before you this morning. We ask that you bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels are before him and in the glory. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. So this morning, amen, 
You know, there's 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 some people, some pastors out there, amen, that are that are good, you know, they're good preachers, good pastors. Some are good friends, and then there's some and then there's some that, that really stick out in your life, amen. Mm -hmm. And uh I can't I can't ever say enough good things about Pastor Jesse. Amen. He's made a he's made a, a, a difference in my life, he's made an impact in my life that I don't think he even knows. Amen. Um, and I was thinking, I was thinking about something. You know, I said something the other day, and I don't remember. I don't know if I heard it from somewhere or if I read it. Amen. Because I hear a lot of things and I read a lot of things, but since I can't remember, I'll take credit for it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and what it was, what it was is 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 uh, when it comes to leaders, it said this way: <clears throat> Don't try to be a leader. Just be just be someone worth following. That's worthy of being followed. Because when we try to be a leader, amen, we're, we're, we're too busy trying to put our own little recipe to it. But when, we're, but when we try to be somebody that's worthy of being followed, God's in control. And, and I'll tell you, um, Pastor Jesse is one of our fellowship leaders, amen. And and he's worthy of being followed, amen. I will follow, I'll follow him, amen, and allow God to, to use him to guide us, amen. So you know what, this morning it's an honor, it's a privilege to have him in our church. So let's give him a warm welcome as he comes. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. It's good to be here with you guys. You guys have a, a beautiful church. Amen. You have a, a beautiful church. And I'm walking over here because i got to get my water. <laughs> and um, you guys... Uh, God is, God is establishing something here. God is establishing something that maybe you don't even realize how powerful it, it, it what God is trying to do here. Um, and I I'm, I'm, was praying, I'm trying to think, you know, you know what, what, what can I tell the church? Because it's only one service. You know, what, what can I tell you that's going to help you and maybe sort of kind of help you understand a little bit of, of, a principle, a powerful principle uh, that can help your church grow, that can help your church grow. Uh, not only help your church grow, but help you grow, help you grow in God. Amen. Uh, and so I want to I want to uh, read a, a, a couple of verses that they have to do with worship. Um, they have to do with the worship of God. And I want to read the story in 1 Kings chapter 18. So if you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles to 1 Kings. I'm going to turn there with you, chapter 18. And this, this, this country, the United States of America, was founded on God. On God. The United States of America it, it was built on Christian principles. How many of you guys know that? It was built on Christian principle. I, I didn't know this. I didn't know that America was founded on Christian principles. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. America was founded on, on uh, the pilgrims. That, that's the foundation. And they were, they were, they were fleeing religious persecution. Uh, and one of the first, one of the first uh, amendments in the Constitution is the freedom of speech. The freedom, you guys are aware of that, the freedom yeah, of speech. Yeah. The second is the right to what? Uh, yeah, carry weapons, amen. <laughs> Crazy, oh, wow, that's out there, right? <laughs> but the first one is the freedom of of, of, of speech, but, but, but with, with speech comes the freedom of religion, the freedom of worship, the freedom of worship. And I wanna speak on worship. The United States of America has fallen away from worship. They've fallen away from, from knowing something here that God says. And here is a story of, of God's people that have fallen so far away from, from, from connecting with God. Really, really, we want to connect with God. You want to connect with God. You want to touch God. You and I... If anything's going to happen in our lives, you have to touch God. 
or God has to touch you, one or the other. Something has to happen. Yes. Okay? And and one of the things that, that, that because we're human, we're human and we're constantly in need of, 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 of some kind of uh, uh, restoration or some kind of, oh, you know, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna, we're constantly, we're human, we're human. And so worship is, is, is that place where, where when we come back to God, the Bible says, draw near unto God in James. Draw near unto God. He says, and I will draw near to you. That is the principle. Amen. You draw near to God, and God says, I will get close to you. And if you look at the world, and most of you here, you know, and I praise God that you made that effort to get up on Sunday morning to come to church. I invited a couple other people that were at the rally yesterday. I said, they come to church. And for whatever reason, the devil's always trying to keep you from worshiping God. Remember that. I don't know what kind of battles you, you guys went through this morning or what kind of craziness was going on this morning. But you're trying to get out of the house. And, and you know, you got to understand, man, that the devil doesn't want you to connect with God, to worship God. He wants you, the devil wants you to just, just sort of, Fall and blend into this world. But America was founded, again, keep this in mind. America was founded on, on, on a people that were seeking God. If you really understand that, that means that, that the programs were being personal, were Protestants. That's why America, United States of America is a Protestant nation. It is not a Catholic nation. It is a Protestant nation. It was based on that, on the, on that principle. That principle. And so they were fleeing religious persecution. But now if you look at America, look at how far it's fallen away from God. Yes. It's fallen away from God that most people today, that you couldn't even really tell the difference if you're a Christian or not. Most people could say, I'm a Christian, but really in reality, you know, just you're not a Christian because your lifestyle says something else. Right. And so here's the story of, of God trying to bring his people back to God, to the power of God, back to the power of God, back to where, you know, God's going to make a difference in your life. Most of us here, we come with all kinds of problems, different issues in life, and many things that many, uh, we don't really, uh, are not really aware uh, that, are, that, are, that are holding us back, amen, from, from, from salvation, from God. You know, when you look at the Bible and when you, when you think of what the Bible says, amen, uh, that uh, the weapons of our, of, of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but uh, it says uh, the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God. They are mighty in God. And it says this, for the pulling down of all strongholds. He says anything that exalts it itself upon the knowledge of God, it doesn't matter what it is that when you bring it to God, it doesn't matter what it is that when you bring it to God, that his power is released. And a lot of people don't understand the power, the power of worship, the power of worship. And so God is trying to bring his people back to worship. So we're going to begin here at 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18, and then we will begin <clears throat> in verse, in verse, what is it? Uh, I got verse 20, 18, is it, yeah, I think it's 18, yeah, verse 18. It says here, and he answered, and I, ha he says, I have not troubled Israel. This is, this is, uh, this is Elijah. He says, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house uh, have in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. You have fallen away from God and had followed Baal, Baal. Uh, and it says here, now therefore send and gather Israel to me. Send and gather Israel to me. I want you guys to pay attention to this. I want, I want you to bring Israel back to me. I want you to bring my people back to me. And then he says here, I want you to bring them to the place called Carmel. Carmel was the place of worship. It's interesting. I've, I've been to Israel. Me and my wife had had the, 
the 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 just the, the joy of being in Mark, Mount Carmel in Israel. And it is a huge mountain. I mean, it's a huge mountain that overlooks the valley, uh, the valley of Armageddon, and that is the place of worship. And so God tells uh, Elijah, says, Elijah, gather the people. He says, because on Mark Carmel, they had an altar of worship. And an altar. And the altar of worship, the, the Jews would, anytime that they would, the, the Jews in their tradition, anytime God did something mighty or, or a miracle, they would always build an altar in honor of God. And the altar always consisted, remember this, of 12 stones. I think they're pretty much bigger than this, but something like this. And this is a perfect example when I seen the stone here. And so just imagine with me 12 stones, you know, laid up together. But in this case, the altar was, was in unrepair. It was just, it was scattered all over the place. And he says, tell the people to gather themselves to Mount Carmel, to this place where this altar, they're no longer uh, uh, understand or remember the power of worship. The power of worship. The power of, 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 of coming in. There's something about there's something about worshiping God. There's something about uh, that, that when you and I begin to sing, like right now, when you began to sing, I mean you could feel the presence of God. Amen. You could feel the presence of God, amen, as God's people began to sing by faith. There's something that happens. There's something that that's that's supernatural that's released. I'm gonna come back to this story. The Bible says in Psalms 23:3, I'm gonna tell you why. What is it that that happens when you and I sing praises to God? It says you are enthroned on the praises of your people. Amen. You are enthroned. Amen. That God is literally finds his throne is one one image that he finds his throne that you and I uh, are establishing and saying God come and visit us God and so God makes his throne among the houses of worship in the presence of God amen God finds his throne and you know what's crazy is this crazy is this that when God created the universe, when God created, this is just a side note, a study of this. When God created the universe, the Bible says that when God was creating the planets and the suns and the stars, the Bible says that in the backdrop of his creation, I want you guys to pay attention to this. In the backdrop of God creating the Milky Way and the galaxies, that the angels of God were singing in the backdrop. How many of you guys ever put worship music? Anybody ever put Christian music? You put Christian music, you go, man, that's, that, that's, something's happening. You know what's happening? God is creating something. When you're worshiping God, when you and I are singing to God, amen. And so you have to understand that when while God is, is creating the universe, so this is the foundation of, 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 of God making the universe. That the angels were there. Why are they there? Because the Bible says that in heaven, the angels are worshiping God 24-7. Yes. 24-7, worshiping God. This is the angels. And so God is saying this. I want you guys to pay attention to this. That God is saying, look, not only do the angels have the privilege to worship, but people have the privilege of worshiping God. Amen. I want you guys to understand this. That God says, look, I'm giving people the privilege to worship. I'm giving people the privilege to sing, to praise me. Because I want to create. I want to restore. I want to heal. I want to do something new in your life. Amen. And so when you and I are worshiping, and I believe God is establishing a church here. This is why what you call a pioneer pastor, Pastor Ben and his wife. This is what you call pioneer, reestablishing the worship of God. Matter of fact, Ben, you need 11 more stones. <laughs> 11 more stones, amen. Worship is symbolizing, amen, that God is doing something great here. And so here in 1 Kings, God tells Elijah, Elijah, call the people. Tell them to come to Mount Carmel. 
And, and so what happens, but not only, listen to this, not only did, did Elijah call the people, but the prophets of Baal called the people. This is what's interesting here. The prophets of Baal, the pro, the, 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 the Baal was the god of fertility, which is in today's day, the god of sexuality, the god of pornography. The God, we live in a world that is a very sensual world, a, a sexualized world, amen. The God of Asherah is, is the God of the produce, the, the God of, 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 of uh, commerce, the God of money. And if you and I look at the world today, what is the, the two major things that dominate the world today is, is, is money and sex. Those are the gods of today. Those are... And so the Bible says that God's people had fallen away so far, listen to this, that they began to mix. They began to mix with the world. You know what? I tell you what, before I became a Christian, I used to say to myself, man, is this all there is to life? There has to be something more to life. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, I says, man, and, until one day somebody came and, and invited me and says, hey, Jesse, we want to invite you to church. And, 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 you know, God loves you. God cares for you. And I remember I walked into a church and they were, they were, they, they were worshiping God, man. They were playing. They had a drummer and they had a guitar and a bass player. And I want to challenge you today, amen, to, that, that God will stir you and, and help you and show you how powerful worship is in the establishment of this church. Yes, amen. They say that within each and every one of us resides a gift, a gift, that God put a gift in you. Yes. That there is potential within each and every one of us, potential that is untapped. And it's waiting, amen. Maybe God uh, is putting in your heart, says, you know, God, I want to do something more for you. Uh, you know what? You can play a piano, or maybe you don't, but you can learn. You can sing, amen, or you can't sing. It doesn't matter. You can play the flute. You know, my goal in my church, I always tell my church, man, I, I like to have a violin up there on the platform. Amen. You guys ever hear those violins? Yeah. God, crazy. <laughs> I would like to have all the instruments worshiping God, Amen. It's a powerful thing. I want to stir you. I want to challenge you. Amen. Because the people of God had, had blended so much into the world. They, they blended. And I was blended into that world. I was lost into that world. Amen. And so here God gives us the privilege. Amen. As a church here in Aruba. I was going to say Aruba though. <laughs> Aruba. Amen. Jerupa? Jerupa Valley. Valley. Amen. I see the potential. I see God wanting to move. Amen. I can see something happening. God, what you guys have here is a miracle. Amen. But I want to encourage you to take it a step further. Yeah, Come on. Amen. I want you to understand how powerful, how powerful worship is. Amen. The foundation, amen, of the church, the foundation is worship. And worship brings the presence of God, amen. And as you establish the presence of God, as you begin to worship, you have to understand the power that is released in the church of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, me and my wife, we've always had the habit, you know what, let's get there early. Let's get there early. Don't ever get in the habit of getting here after worship. You know, like sometimes, I, you know, I've known of some people that are always late. For worship. I, I'm not, you know, if I'm stepping on your toes, I'm sorry, amen. <laughs> well, take it personal. But you know what, man? Oh, I just want to hear the word. Wait, you're missing the whole thing. Yes, amen. You're missing the whole thing. It's worship. Yes. It's the worship of God, amen. There's something about worship, amen. Uh, you know, I don't just want to come and hear the word of God, amen. And if, you, and if you're always missing worship because, because you don't understand the power of worship. I got saved in a service, uh, uh, and, I, and when I say, repeat myself because I want to reiterate it, I got saved in a worship service. I got saved, I got touched when the church was worshiping, and I was looking around, I said, man, what's, what's going on with these people? They're singing to who? <laughs> 
Who are they singing to? And I sing the lyrics like your pastor says. Sing the lyrics. Because you're establishing something here. It's an atmosphere of the presence of God. This is why we all need to be here. Amen. For start, we need to be here. We need to come. The Bible says, enter into the courts of God. Amen. With thanksgiving. The Bible says that enter into the courts of God with thanksgiving. Enter into the courts of God with praise. Enter into his, his house. Amen. With thanksgiving in your, in your heart. And he says, come uh, with all your heart. Come. Come with, with thanksgiving. Because this is where God moves. Amen. Could you imagine we're singing, we're singing. I want you to vision, envision this with me. As we come together, Jesus says, wherever there is two or three gathered in my name, I don't care if it's two people or one people. It don't matter. You come, amen, and you worship God. Because with the, the moment you begin to lift your hands and to sing and, and, and love God with all your heart, it's like literally you are welcoming the king, amen, into, into your presence. And that is the power of worship. If something happens when you and I worship God, amen. We're not just here going through some religious motions or, or, or just singing some kind of religious songs. But as you establish your church, I want to re, re, reiterate this and emphasize this. As you establish your church, because you are establishing your church. And as you start, amen, the service, amen, to understand that worship is a critical part of your church. How many can say amen? Amen. Worship is the critical part of your church. To start, amen, and worshiping God and saying, God, we need you to, to do something here. And so here is Elijah. The people of God had fallen away from God. They've fallen away from God. Think about this. This is, this is the first five books of, of, of uh, Exodus, the first five books, which is called the Torah. And wherever God's people went, they would build monuments. They would bi build a structure of 12 stones. So finally they get to first, first and second kings, and they've fallen away from God. They've fallen away from God. And so God is telling Elijah, he says, hey, bring them back. That's what church is. Bring them back. Bring them back. You know, when you invite somebody to church or you pray for somebody or you invite somebody, says, oh, I don't know. I'm not really sure. There's a resistance there. But I'll tell you what, if you get a breakthrough in that, I want to encourage you with that. Yeah. The same God that touched you is the same God that will touch them. Amen. Yeah. And so what happened is they fell away from God. They forgot who they were. I want, I want to emphasize this for a second. They forgot who they were. You know, that's where I was. I said, God, why am I here? I was 18 years old. Why am I here? And they invited me to church and I got saved. I gave my life to God and I remember saying that. I says, now I know who I was meant to be. Now I know, amen, that, that there's a God and who loves me. And now I know, amen, that I can turn to him. And he will never leave me nor forsake me. And he will love me, amen, like no one else can love me. I found God. Somebody restored me, amen, back, amen, to God. But it was through, it was through worshiping God. And so the people of God, they, they lost their identity. They, and you look today at the world, people don't know who they are. They're confused. People are broken up in different cliques. I mean, to the point where, could you imagine? I mean, it's, it's crazy what's happening today. The division. The division of, of uh, you know, are you a male or a female? Oh, I'm non-binary. I'm nothing yet. I'm still in the progress. 
Wait a minute. Are, are you a woman or a... No, I'm a woman, but I'm a, I, I transition now. And there, there's confusion. The world, amen, is so divided, so blended in. That's the strategy of Satan. And so here, Baal, Baal is called up because Baal is also going to challenge God. Baal is going to challenge God. And so Baal comes and Asheroth comes, the God of sex and the God of, uh, of, of commerce. But here comes Elijah. And he's trying to restore them, trying to bring them back because they blended so much into the culture. I look at the world today and I says, man, you know what? I know, you know, there's, you got black, you got white, you got, you know, you got this, you got that and whatever. It says, you know what, man? I'm a child of God. Yeah. I know who I am. Yeah. I belong to Jesus Christ. I know who I am. Amen. I know, amen, my purpose. Yes, amen. And so we live in a world today that is constantly again or a society that is constantly undermining the church and mocking the church how many would say that's true right. I mean you can't even say you're a Christian without well, people beginning to insult you or demean you or criticize you I, I understand that I've been a Christian for 40 since 1985 longer than most of you have been born <laughs> never thought I would ever say that I've been saved since 1985. And I know I've been there. I've been in the mockery. I've been in that, uh, what do we call that? The, 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 the discrimination and the persecution and the mocking. But I says, you know what? I know who I am. I'm a child of God. Amen. And you and I have to make a stand for worship. How many can say amen? amen. Make a stand for worship. I'm not going to let the devil rob, amen, who I am. And so the devil had, had robbed their identity. They, they, and so many Christians who know God, but then they, they fall back into the world. They fall back. And so here Elijah, he comes and he says, verse 19, now gather, therefore... Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel. And the Bible says that 450 prophets, listen to that, 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asheroth. And it describes who eat at Jezebel's table. Jezebel was a witch. She was a witch. Hated the church hated the church so Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and he gathered the prophets together on Carmel it's he, it's, uh, he gathered them amen and Elijah came to all the people and he said this and he says this uh, pay attention to these words he says how long will you be confused of course he said how long will you be between two opinions but he says how long will you be confused how long will you be confused between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. They were like convicted. They were quiet. Amen. They were quiet. Amen. And so what happened here is that Elijah... Elijah, at this point, the, the, uh, the, the false prophets began to worship their God, and nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. They began to call upon their God, their false God. They began to cut themselves and, and worship, but, but nothing would happen. So now in verse, in verse, uh, my goodness, in verse, the, let me get my spot here. Verse 21, follow with me. Elijah said something. Verse 21. I want you guys to pay attention to this part. Then Elijah came to the people. Amen. 
And he said, how long will you be of two opinions? How long? How long will you hesitate? How long? And then in verse 31, Elijah took the 12 stones. Look at verse, at verse, did I say, yeah, 31. Verse 31. And Elijah took the 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of, of the sons of Israel, right? To whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. In other words, he's saying, look, this is who you are. This is who you were meant to be. You belong to God. You are God's people. And he took them to the stones and he, and he began to get all the stones. He began to get all the stones that were that were gathered. And, and as he gathered the stones, they say that he began to maybe perhaps name the tribe of each, uh, the, the, the name of, of all the tribes of Israel. He began to name them. The tribe of Benjamin, come near. The tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Judah. Amen. And he began to name them, come near, as he restored the whole altar of God. Come near to God. This is why Jesus says, come unto me, amen, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. He says, come back to me. And the Bible says that when they came, when they came, listen to verse 30. Elijah said to all the people, verse 30, come near. So all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord. He repaired the altar of the Lord. And the Bible says, amen, in verse 38, verse 30, 37 and 38, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Listen to this. Their hearts came back to God again. They repented. They came back to God. Verse 38, and at that moment when worship was established, at the moment when worship was established, the, the moment that they came together, something happened. Look at what happened. He says, fire came down from heaven. Amen. Verse 38, then the fire of the Lord <laughs> fell and consumed the burnt offering. Amen. And when, now in verse 39, when the people saw it, when all God's people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Amen. How many here praise God? Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Praise God. See, when you worship God, when you come to church, you realize, amen, who you are. You realize, amen, that you're a child of God. Amen. You come under the covering of God. You belong to the Lord. Amen. Something supernatural happens. I remember that I was always living in fear. Always living in fear. I always thought, man, you know what? I don't want to die because I know if I die, I'm going to go to hell. I, I knew it. I always li lived in fear. The fear of, of, of something happening. But I remember, amen, when I gave my life to God and I says, you know what, I belong to God. And I understand that the Lord God, amen, he is my shepherd. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow, amen, of, of death, I will fear no evil for God is with me. I know who God is, amen. And I came back to God. And so worship is, is, is something powerful. You know, when your pastor when he says, hey, let's lift up our hands and let's worship God. Amen. That's a powerful thing when you lift up your hands. Yes. It is through the whole Bible. Amen. When you and I, I remember I had a hard time lifting up my hands. I was embarrassed. I didn't want to lift up my hands. I was like, man, I'm embarrassed. What are people, you know, that's embarrassing. And I says, you know what? It's in the Bible. The Bible says lift up your hands. There's something about lifting up your hands that that represents. It's like it's like what you know, you know. You ever see like your your I don't know any sports fanatics here, and you watch your team, and like you know, I, I, like I like to watch the Warriors. I used to you know the the, the Bay Area, and I'll watch a, a game, and I'll see them score or do something. Or I'll see Stephen Curry do this crazy move, and I'll just jump up. 
just jump up. The whole stadium would just jump up and, and just start shouting and roaring. And all their hands would go up. I go, wow, wow, why? Because because something great happened. Yes. Because there was a victory. Yes. When you and I lift up our hands, we're yes. saying something great happened. Yes. There is a God who died for me, amen. There's a God who loves me. There's a God that saved me. And there's a God that's good, that's doing something great in my life and in the lives of others. When you lift up your hands, it's something powerful, amen. It is a sign of victory. And so God says, I want to restore that worship. And I can take it, narrow. I have to narrow this down to you guys. In Jerupa Valley. I believe that God's going to establish something. And no, it has established something. Yes. But he wants to take it to that next level. How many want God to take his church to the next oh, level? Yes. But it's going to be you guys saying, God, where God says, he says, hey, how long? Will you be blended in with the world? How long will you be blended with the world, with the God of, of Baal, the God of sexuality, or the God of commerce? How long are you going to be there? Because when all these people went up to Mount Carmel, listen to me, they didn't go, they said that they didn't go separate. They all went together. The people of Asherah, the people of Baal, and the people of God were all mixed in. They were all blended in. Could you imagine that? All blended in. And so this is why when, he, when Elijah picked up the stones, he named the tribes. He specifically named the tribes. He, he called them uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the tribe of Manasseh. And he looked at them and they would hear and, 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 and they would separate themselves. And they all came and they separated. And the moment that they separated themselves in worship, the Bible says at that moment, the fire came down and God began to move. Let me tell you something. Me and my dad and my mom, we were, out, we were lost in sin, lost without God. And I remember trying to find a way out of my life of, you know, just a life of drugs and just, just destruction. And I remember my dad, my mom, and me, we, my brothers and sisters, we all went to church, all of us. We walked into church, and I remember, you know what, I didn't think there was any hope for me. I didn't think there was any answer for me. But there was people that were worshiping God there. There was people, amen, that were already lifting up their hands, believing God. There was people that were praying for me, amen, that I didn't even know. And when you pray and you worship, you're praying for people that are lost. You're praying for people that are in bondage. You're praying, amen, like I, when I go, our, our church is on a hill. Our church right now is on a hill. And I go up when I pray in the mornings, amen, there at the church, you know, I'll lift up my hands on Saturdays and I'll look towards Richmond. I lift up my hands. God, I pray for Richmond. God, I pray for the new converts. God, I pray, God, for my marriage. I pray for my wife, God. I pray for my children. I speak blessing. Yes. That's the power when you lift up your hands. Yes, you pray for your children. You pray for, for, you know, your church. You pray. And that's what's taking place here. When you lift up your hands, amen. And so we need to lift up our hands. We, we need to understand this. Matter of fact, there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus Christ, there's actually two verses. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Check this one out. 1 Timothy 2, 8. How many here need God to work in your life? Amen. Only two of us. How many of us need God to work in our lives? Amen. amen. To remove things from our lives. Amen. When you lift up your hands, and you come to church. This is the strategy of Satan. Many times when we come to church, we're in our cars and we're fighting like cats and dogs all the way to church. And we walk into church and we just kind of pretend like nothing's happening. And there's anger there. How many can say, be honest, says, you know what, that's true, we're human. Don't ever forget you're human. Don't ever forget you're human. We don't forget we're Christians. We forget we're human. We're human. And so here in 1 Timothy... 
chapter 2, verse 8 says, Therefore I want men in every place. Listen to this. I want men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands. And then it says something behind that that's pretty interesting. Without anger or dissension. That means that when you lift up your hands, even though sometimes you don't want to. How many sometimes don't want to? We don't want to. We don't feel like it. I don't feel it. Yeah, I get it. Because there's things in our heart. There's anger. There's resentment. I've had a bad week. But the moment you begin to worship God and God establishes his presence, listen to me. God begins to remove Amen. those things from your heart. Yeah. It's a powerful thing. Yeah. It's worship when you lift up your hands. Because when you lift up your hands, you're saying, God, uh, I, I surrender to you. And so here, it's, it's like when you come to church and, and you know, we're, I don't know how many services you have a week, but you come and, and, and you says, God, you know, I've had a hard week. I've had a difficult time this week and I've been going through these things, God, and there's things in my heart. There's, there, there, there's, some, there's some areas in my heart that I need you to remove this. And when you worship him, the presence of God comes down and he'll help you to remove all that junk that's within your heart. How many say thank you, Lord? Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Lord. So it is to our benefit. It is to our benefit to worship God. Let me give you another verse, Luke 24, 50. This is a very powerful one. I, I, you find this one. This is pretty interesting. Luke 24, 50. This is Jesus. The other verse I want to get, share with you. Jesus here at this point, and we're talking about worship. He lifted up his hands. I don't know if the verse is up here. In Luke 24, 50. And he says here, he led them as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands. You guys see that? And I want to close with this thought. But what happened after he lifted up his hands? It's not up here. No, it's not up here. You guys have it? What happened after he lifted up his hands? He what? He blessed them. When you and I worship God, amen, and you lift up your hands, you can speak blessing. You can speak blessing. God, I bless my wife. I bless my children. I bless God, the church. Father, the people that come to the church, bless them. God, the people that are here, amen, and, and they need salvation, and they need deliverance, God. And you, the difference that happens is because of the power of God. When you worship God, the presence of God comes. And I want to challenge the church today to fight for that. To fight for that. And, to, and, and, I, and I'm going to pray for you, amen, that, that God would say, look, man, uh, you know, when I started my church over there, I only had one person playing the drums, and they didn't play it too good, amen. But I didn't care. I said, you go ahead and keep beating on that drum. I had another guy that could barely play the guitar. I said, go ahead and try it. Keep working at it. Yeah. They learned on YouTube. They started. Uh, we have a sister that plays the piano. We have another sister that plays the piano. And today we have like three guitarists, uh, probably, yeah, three, one, two, yeah, three guitarists, like three drummers. Two piano players and a worship team. Amen. I'll tell you what, but you, but you got to fight for it. And I want to challenge you this morning and how important it is to worship God. Amen. To worship him. To come and to say, and to understand that, that nothing happens unless the presence of God comes. Yeah. Nothing happens. Amen. That's all I have for you this morning. Every head bowed. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's give the Lord a praise. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we're going to pray. See, worship establishes the presence of God. Amen. Lifting up our hands. Amen. Pronouncing blessing. But it also brings a covering. Amen. A covering over your children. It brings, lift up the, uh, it says here, uh, before the presence of the Lord, lift up your hands to him for the life of, of your little children. Amen. The Bible says that when you lift up your hands, 
You speak blessing. You speak protection. Why? Because we're in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle. Amen. Right now. And today I want to encourage you. Amen.